Dr. Mindy here, and this video is so needed. So I have brought you how a woman should be fasting. We should be doing it different than men, and there is a very specific process I want you to go through if you're going to adopt a fasting lifestyle. So I have brought you, I have five steps to building a fasting lifestyle for a woman of all different ages, and I have three sets of rules that I'm bringing you depending upon your age. So I'm, if, you, if you're new to my channel, welcome, subscribe. I'm bringing you the research on fasting. I'm showing you how to build a fasting lifestyle. As always, if you love this video, please share it out into the world. I just, from the bottom of my heart, I feel like we could change so much suffering, so many diseases if people understood the power of fasting. But this is also part two, so if you didn't get part one, go look at why I think women should fast based off of research. This is the how. So as always, I hope this helps. Okay, so I'm gonna go through three very specific pieces of this video. So the first I wanna talk about questions that we get around women and fasting. This will be pretty quick. I just wanna address some major elephants in the room that we hear all the time. Second, I wanna show you how you move from maybe not fasting at all, all the way to what we call fasting for your cycle. If you're a postmenopausal woman, stay tuned. I'm gonna be talking about that in this video as well. And then the third thing I wanna go through is what we call the rules. So the rules of fasting for women. And this is gonna be based off of your age group. And I will talk about, there are three age groups. I have women under 40, I have women 40 to 40, uh, 55, and then postmenopausal women. So I will break it down into these three groups, what the rules of fasting should be for you. So let's start off with the questions. First, is fasting safe for women? The answer is yes, yes, and yes. If you are not convinced, I just did a 20 minute YouTube video for you on the science showing that it's safe for women. If your doctor is not convinced, please go take them to that video so they can see the science. Number two, is fasting, this is a question we hear all the time, is fasting helpful for women who wanna lose weight, prevent disease, and slow down the aging process? Heck yeah. There is more evidence than ever before showing that fasting is an incredible tool for weight loss, incredible for preventing disease, and incredible for slowing down aging. Go watch that video plus many more that I've done on that. Okay, third question, can women use fasting to balance hormones? And the answer again is absolutely. Now with this question, you have to be aware of what we call the hormonal hierarchy. Oxytocin is a hormone that controls cortisol. Cortisol controls insulin. Insulin controls your sex hormones, estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. So when you come to fasting, you usually come in the door of insulin. So you gotta be aware, and I'll show this as we go through this, this, um, the, the rules, you've gotta be aware that all those hormones need to come into play for a woman when she fasts. I'll explain more in a moment. And then do women need to fast differently than men? Again, we are back at yes, 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 and yes. So when you read an article in the newspaper or a magazine that says women shouldn't be, doing, shouldn't be fasting, ketosis is harmful for women, I am in complete opposition of that statement, I, but women need to do it differently. And this is what I'm trying to highlight on this video and the one I just did on uh, why every woman should be fasting. So that's the questions. Okay, here's the how, and this is sort of the big picture I want you to see. There are four steps that I take my patients through and my Resetter Academy members through to make sure that they are successfully fasting um, and they don't tank their sex hormones, which is very, very common. So first step, Start with intermittent fasting. If you have not done intermittent fasting, it's 13 to 15 hours. This is a great starting point. Get comfortable there. You don't, if, if, you don't need to think about anything else other than start with building an intermittent fasting lifestyle. So I've done videos on how do you get, start with fasting. Go back and watch those so that you can learn how to be, start with this first step. Okay, once you do that, the second step 
is that you ask yourself, are you getting into ketosis? So this is a really important part of the equation because if you're not getting into ketosis, then you're gonna need to troubleshoot, and I've done videos on that, of why you're not getting into ketosis. For every person, especially women, we wanna start with the foundational. Can you intermittent fast? Can you get into ketosis? If you are asking, well, how do I know if I get into ketosis? This is where we use a tool called a Keto Mojo. So it is a blood sugar reader and it allows us to see if you're getting into ketosis. So I have also done a lot of uh, informational squares on my Instagram. So go follow me on Instagram talking about what all those numbers mean. So that's the second step. Get yourself into ketosis. If you're not, then you're gonna need to troubleshoot from that point. Okay, step three. A lot of women, by the way, will stay in those first two steps, but I'm gonna encourage you to come into step, step three because this is where we can really slow aging down. This is where we can prevent cancers. This is where you can get yourself metabolically fit. And that is understanding that there is more to fasting than just intermittent fasting. In fact, to date, I have come up with nine different fasts. Yep, you probably have heard me say seven before. I am now adding the anti-aging fast in, which I spoke of last week, and I'm going to be adding a happiness fast in. So stay tuned for that one. So there are all these different fasts, and it, what is the most beneficial to you is to learn the different fasts. So once you've done intermittent fasting, once you're in ketosis, okay, now let's explore these other fasts. Best place to understand these fasts is to come into our Resetter Collaborative and do Fast Training Week with us every week or every month. Every month I'm bringing you one of these fasts that we get to explore together. Okay, once you've come to those three steps, now you're ready to do what I call fasting for your cycle. And this, this ties into the rules. So here are the rules. If you are under 40 years old, then you need to be very careful about fasting around your cycle. So it looks like this. From the first day of your period until day 21 of your period, you can fast as much as you want. It really doesn't make a big difference. If you want to do a three-day water fast, if you want to you know, go into a real deep fast, do it then. You want to experiment with the eight fasts or nine fasts, fabulous. Do it in that time period. But on day 21, when your body needs to make progesterone, you're going to need to make sure that you are not in ketosis. You, if you want to intermittent fast, starting from day 21 to day 28, fabulous. But I do not want you in a state of ketosis from day 21 to day 28, because your body is trying to make progesterone. And if you don't make enough progesterone, it'll throw your periods off. It can, th it can cause your hair to fall out. Um, it can make you infertile. So for women under 40, please, it's simple. Just don't go into long fast. Don't go into ketosis from day 21 to till the day you bleed. So if you have a 30 day cycle, that'll be the day that you start back up again. Okay. Those of you from 40 to 55, this is my category, and I wrote a whole book on this called The Menopause Reset, so please, if you want a free copy, a digital copy, just put Menopause Reset in the uh, comments. I'll make sure you get a free copy. But here's the tricky, tricky spot for 40 to 55. The first thing I want you to understand is that starting at 40, your estrogen and progesterone levels are starting to go down. Your ovaries are out. They are like, I've done it now since for 30 some years, I'm not going to keep making sex hormones. And so they hand the job of making sex hormones over to your adrenal glands. So if you're under a lot of stress and you're in between 40 and 55, it gets tricky in that time because your adrenals are working really hard and when you first build a fasting lifestyle, you actually add a little more stress to those adrenals. So my first recommendation to the post, the 40 to 55 year old woman is make sure your adrenals are strong. So I've done videos on that. I'll do more if you have questions, just put them in the, in the comments. We'll make sure that we answer those. So strengthen your adrenals. Second thing, track your, your cycle. I use something called the Clue app and I look at it to alter my fasting schedule around where I am in my cycle. 
I am 50, almost 51 years old, and sometimes that cycle is 30 days, sometimes that cycle is 90 days. So I track it, and when you hit day 21, just like for the other woman, you, uh, the women under 40, you are going to need to pare your fasting down to an intermittent fasting lifestyle, and you're going to need to make sure that you're leaning into hormone building foods. Those foods are beans, rices, squashes, potatoes, um, grass-fed beef, citrus fruits, tropical fruits. These are not foods that will keep you in ketosis. It, and you're not meant to be in ketosis during this time. You need to make progesterone. Couple different ways that a perimenopausal woman knows that her progesterone is, little, is low. A, a Dutch test. I love the Dutch test. Fabulous way for you to be able to see very clearly your hormonal profile. So if you haven't run a Dutch test and you're over 40, I highly recommend it. So just put Dutch test in the comments. We'll make sure you get a copy. Okay, second thing, there are things like if you are spotting, like if you spot for a couple of days and then you don't get your period for another week, that's low progesterone. If you're anxious, you're not sleeping, that can also be low progesterone. So you are going to want to step out of a long fast. Don't go into these long fasts when those symptoms show up and it's past day 21. I do not want you doing block fasts. You can do intermittent fasting, and I want you doing hormone building foods until your cycle comes. Now we have some variations on that we discuss in our Reset Academy, so join us in there if you wanna learn more about some of the tricks beyond that. Um, okay, 55 year old woman. So oh, let me back up one more point. If you're between 40 and 55 and you wanna do these block fasts, you can just do them between day, day one and day 21 kind of like the woman under 40. Okay, 55. So here's what's cool about if you're postmenopausal. Now, if you're listening to this and you're like, well, I went into menopause at 47, fine. I put you in the post of, this is postmenopausal women. That's, this would be your category. So at 55, you can fast whenever. You don't need to think about your cycle if you don't have a cycle. This would be the same for those of you that maybe had a hysterectomy, a surgery, you went into surgical menopause. So if you went into menopause earlier than 55, this still applies to you. So you can fast whenever, but what I want you to realize is you do not have a lot of progesterone. If your progesterone is low, it can make estrogen go very high. And too much bad estrogen is going to be hard on your heart and it's going to promote different cancers. So we're back at progesterone. We need to raise progesterone. So you can raise progesterone by stepping out of ketosis either on a weekly basis or on a monthly basis. If you're gonna do it on a weekly basis, I recommend one day a week you do a feast day and that you lean into those foods I talked about, the beans, the rices, the squash, the tropical fruits. One day a week you step out and then you go back into your fasting lifestyle the rest of the time. The other trick that we have done is we've done five day periods where we build up uh, postmenopausal women's hormones. So you could go do a whole month or maybe once a quarter even, you can make a decision, okay, I'm feeling a little anxious. I'm feeling uh, that like I'm not sleeping well. I need to focus on raising progesterone and you can take a five day period and do hormone building with intermittent fasting. So that is what a postmenopausal woman can do. It's less important the timing that a postmenopausal woman fasts, but it still is important that you step out of ketosis, that you are not in extreme fasting all the time. For a woman at, of any age, the, the one meal a day, the long fast over and over and over again is a recipe for tanking your hormones. So I hope that helps. I really wanted to leave two foundational videos for women. If you love this, share it out. 
If you're still confused, put your questions in the comments. We'll make sure you get answers. And join us, we're doing a fat burner reset starting September 21st, where I take you through the, all the different fasts, take you through different eating styles. We have Zoom calls where there's a community, there's videos, an ebook. So we have you do an experience of fasting with us so you can understand how to apply those principles. So the fat burner one is coming up, just put fat burner in your comments and we'll make sure you get it. But women, we need to fast, it's incredible. So don't give up on yourself, learn the art of fasting for women. And I'm just so excited to present this information to you because as a menopausal woman, this fasting was a game changer for me. It has been the greatest gift for mental clarity, for keeping my weight where I want it to be, uh, for sleeping better. This has been an incredible gift for my life, for my patients' lives, for thousands of resetters, but you gotta know how to do it right. Hope that helps.